Ek gebruik Grimmering al vir baie jare, maar vir een lang tyd het ek nie geweet precies wat ek op my vel sit nie, en of dit skadelik vir my of vir die omgeving is nie. Om my haare en Grimmering te laat doen, is een belangrike deel van my werk voor die camera's. Dit is die tyd wat ek gebruik om myself emotioneel voor te bereid vir dit wat ek moet doen. So, jou Grimmeer kunstenaar moet ook jou beste vriend wees. <laughs> Dis hy of sy wat hulle toover staffie swaai. Maar die producte wat hulle gebruik moet ook op camera werk. Maar die lei, toe ons nou eers begin saamwerk het, het ek nogal iets interessants opgeleed. My vel het nie meer soos vroeger gejuk nie. Hoekom sal dit wees? Ja, my producte wat ek gebruik is um, baie nou keer gekies vir my klienten. Dit is cruelty free en vegan. Dit is baie sag en vriendelik vir die vel, want ons geen harde chemikalie daar in nie. Producte wat baie meer chemikalie bevat, het baie van hulle geklaar, hulle velle juk, as hulle dit te lang gebruik. En dan moet die mens net meer extra producte opzet, om dit te neutraliseer. So wanneer het jy nou besluit, ok, ek wil nou iets anders gaan soek? Dit was een geleidelike besluit gewees. Soos wat ons gesien het, die industrie het verander, en die, 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 dit wat die mense soek, die kliënte, het dit vir my baie meer oortuigend gemaakt, en die besluit baie makkelijker gemaakt, om te gaan vir cruelty free en vegan producte. Maar alleen het jy miskien enige verskil gesien? O ja, nie beslis, dit is nie so uitgedroog nie, weet, jy kan sien dat dit, dit ons baie meer lewe aan, aan die vel, dit is nie meer geirriteerd nie, en hulle kan langer met dit loop, voordat hulle voel hulle moet dit afval. Wel, ek is oortuig, maar hierdie hele ervaring het rechtige indruk op my gemaakt. So ek soek dees dan die wereld rond vir lekker plaaslike producte, wat nie die aarde of ons gezondheid skade aan die nie. Kosmetische chemikus Phoebe Williams het 2,5 dekadese ondervinding met groot internationale velsoorghandelsname en het eerstehandse kennis van die verscheidene chemikalia wat ons op ons velle sit. A lot of these products are manufactured internationally. All right, they have to sit on containers, they've got to be sent all over the world. They need solid preservatives, stabilizers. They are going to keep these products from turning into mush, growing all sorts of bacteria and bits and pieces. It has a place, it's just not our place. So let's say on average, you, it's 10 products, okay, that you're using. And let's say on average, there are 10 different ingredients. And let's just say 20% of them have links to cancer or have links to being a hormone disruptor. Uh, if yeah. I knew that, okay, why would you take that chance? So what is it that I should be looking out for? I'm sure you would have heard about parabens, you yeah. would have heard about formaldehyde, things like phthalates, that's your fragrance-based stuff. If you've got sensitive skin, it's a problem. Dit laat my aan vroeger hierdie reeks dink, toe ek na die probleem van chemikalie in ons oceane gekyk het, en ek besef het dat die chemikalie in ons skoonheidsprodukte ook deel van die probleem is. And here's the lekker thing, there really are beautiful alternatives. One of the ones that I'm most concerned about is hydroquinone. It's a skin evener. But what we do is we use licorice root. It's such a clever little ingredient because it penetrates into the layers of the skin. When it comes to a buildup of melanin, it knocks it about and then evenly distributes it over your skin. Toe sy kon na Tevo handgemaakte seep koop omdat sy bekommerd was oor haar dochterse vel, is sy nie besef dat sy op die ou en tot twee volwaardige onderneming saam met haar man Sipo lei nie. My daughter had eczema and when I bought the soap, I saw that it worked on her skin brilliantly. And then I thought, well, if it says handmade, I can possibly make it myself. And the more I made, the more addicted I got. <laughs> I couldn't stop. I think once you've saponified oils, which is the chemical reaction that takes place when you make soap, you really don't stop. It was very important for us to know where our ingredients come from. So we started these relationships with the farmers or the growers that we get the ingredients from. The olive oil that's locally sourced, the essential oils that we get directly from growers. We've actually seen the essential oils distilled. And we use a lot of indigenous oils from Yopuchus, rose geranium, we have mbepo or helichrysum. Zikona se suke na die perfecte galambotter het haar by vrouwe cooperaties in Ghana uitgebring. It's so creamy and so smooth. Yes, it actually... I feel like I've got butter. One thing that we knew was that we didn't want to work through a middleman. Meanwhile, the butter itself is produced by highly skilled women who are breadwinners in their own homes. Het producte is ook een groot probleem. Met plastiek besoedeling wat ons planeet versmoor, 
word dit al hoe belangriker om alternatieve opties te hee. Al by vervaardigers met wie ek gesels het, bring die selfde sorg wat hulle vir mense in die omgeving het in elke deel van hulle bezigheid in, van ethische verkryging tot die verpakking van producte. And one of the things that I was really concerned about was what we we're doing to our planet. I wanted something sustainable. I, I most certainly don't need to kind of any animal testing whatsoever, and I don't believe that we should use any animal byproducts in products at all. So we use recycled paper, we use glass, and we really minimize the use of plastic. We also use metal tins, so everything we use in packaging except for the paper is reusable or we've what it recycled ourselves. I wanted to make sure that the impact that I'd already had on this planet, I was going to minimize it and not only minimize it, but turn it around. Wow, thank you Madeleine, this is perfect, so it's always. Well, that was not that uiterlijke schoonheid nie net vertoon hoef te wees nie. Dit is wonderlijk om te weet dat daar skoonheidsprodukte met bestanddele is wat nie vir ons skadelik is nie en wat op een manier vervaardig is wat nie ons planeet vernietig nie. Dit gaan als rechtig oor om ons bewust te maak, etikette te lees en ook die nodige vraag te vraag. Maar nou is dit eerst tyd vir lichte, camera en aksie. Ons het oneindige keeses wanneer dit by goedkoop vinnige modus kom, wat onwerp is om van net een seizoen te hou. Maar elke skakel in die aanverketting van elke kledingstuk wat jy koop, het een inpak op die omgeving. Omtrend 85% van alle kleren wat gemaakt is, beland op die ou en op vulles hoope. Meer as een derde van al die mikroplastiek in die see, kom van synthetiese materiaal wat gewas is. Waterbronne word in groot hoeveelhede dier tekstielproduksie uitgeput en vergiftig. Dit is net een paar van die skokkende feite en cijfers waarop ek afgekom het oor die inpak van ons modeverslaving. Om spoor ingewikkelde situasie beter te verstaan, het mense kenner nodig. Jackie May het een nie wensgevende organisatie gestuk wat de balans tussen levensstijl en volhoubaarheid bring. The environment, social justice have always been very important to me and really felt there needed to be something in the media space. It was appealing and convincing people to change their consumer behavior. We've got so many incredible designers in South Africa who are working sustainably. It's a very inherent kind of African way to use what you've got. Ed and Lee and Chad Peterson's bezigheid focus op exclusieve kleren en bykomstighede. Hulle experimenteer met afvalstukkies leer en het na duizende Japanese onwerpers videos online gekyk. Our leather specifically is um, a byproduct of the meat industry in South Africa. So we use um, vegetable tan leather, which is organically dyed. And some of the cotton canvas is actually French linen, which is milled up and weaved up uh, or from scratch. Um, and is it done locally? And that's locally, that, everything yeah. is done locally. So that's on a, on a, a jacquard mill machine, yeah. So we really um, are trying to work with the, the resources in South Africa to just create more sustainable fabrics by working with the different communities. We did start the brand focusing on bags and various other accessories. We've also started to work now in apparel, so making t-shirts out of hemp organic cotton, uh, we make some caps out of hemp and recycled PET. There's some fibers that can be recycled. Um, there's some fibers that can be made out of nylon and synthetic waste, which is an interesting fiber because then it is a polyester or a synthetic a fabric. We, we like to, to promote natural fibers because you want your clothes to go back into the soil as, as food rather than as a poison. The Twig Sustainable Fashion Awards is in 2019 geskep om erkenning aan plaaslike ontwerpers te gee wat hier die foutieve stelsel herontwerp. I grew up in a family on the coast, um, enjoying outdoors, camping, the beach, seeing some of these environments changing, seeing pollution moving into them and thinking to myself, how can make a difference? The idea then was really to look at the variety of waste materials which we identified new value in and it just required a process called upcycling where you take a, an existing waste material and change or process the material and revalue it into something new. We talk about circular design a lot, so you keep your resources in a system for as long as possible, and you also design the product and the garment so that you can Used. take it apart and turn mm -hmm. it into other things, or you can take it apart and recycle it easily. 
Big companies, they have to make thousands and thousands and thousands of products per day, and they have to make sacrifices, unfortunately. And that's when the unethical practices come to fall. However, with us, we are lucky to be in a position that we not have, we don't have to make thousands of garments. We don't want to make thousands and thousands, because thousands of garments, I mean, what, what happens with the end? Ellen MacArthur Foundation has found that one dump truck of clothing waste is being discarded a second around the world. The stats in, in Cape Town are that just over 6% of the landfill consists of textile waste. The products that we produce have to last mm. and they have to be transcend the season so it has to be in, in fashion essentially forever. Re the resale market is just growing and that really is a, is, gives, gives garments such a longer life. Mm. But if they're badly made, they're not going to be able to be resold. By a two year answer, winkels word your leave data heights organizations bestier. So, you for minner nie net afval nie, maar your geld word ook for a goeie doel gebruik. Ah! Ik <coughs> gaan vandaag naar my eerste kleren uit Rail geleentheid toe. We did it by van ons dra om trend net 30% van die kleren in ons kaste gereeld. En die goed waar van ons nie meer van nou nie, kan miskien eman anders a ginstel in kleding stuk word. So, kom saam met my. I think I went to my first clothes swap about 10 years ago and I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was such an amazing idea. So I thought, why not, you know, we'll start them here as well. People buy clothes, they get bored of them, they want something new. So instead of always buying new clothes and chucking stuff out. Welcome everyone. I think it's a, nice it's a much more sustainable way of, of changing your wardrobe. They remind me of, of, of how we shop at home in Kenya. It's like a huge second-hand market that we have there. And it's a different experience of digging through clothes and finding stuff. What has been your most favorite item? An amazing pair of leather boots. So a cool pair of super comfy stockings with a skirt attached. It's just a black jersey that I wear all the time. Another thing that I really love about them is that feeling when somebody else tries on this neglected thing that you've had forever and you look at it and it's got this new life. And my favorite item of clothing ever was from my friend in Jairu and it's this billowing golden dress that every time I put it on, I think, thank you, Njairu. This is for me to learn that we still have to be in touch with the youngest mothers and be fantastic to be like, without to be suddling and to be able to use the hullbrunnen to bring. To think about things in a circular way, it's not just a sustainable business, but it also brings us to the renewing of our planet and community.